and strawberries in Sacramento. Well, I end up in this huge hobo jungle. I mean, I mean, made this look small. And the leader of the hobo jungle, he's a big, red-haired Irish fella. You know, kind of guy likes to hear himself talk. He says to everybody, he says, you out there, now looky here. Are you getting tired of not having enough to eat? Are you getting tired of nothing but vegetables day after day? Yeah. Would you like some meat? Yeah. Then I'll tell you what we're going to do. Down in the rail yard, there's a special train that pulled in this afternoon. That train is loaded with nothing but chicken. Yeah. Now, time Quiet down so you know the plan. Here's what we're gonna do. I tell my fatty. You and Scranton, the two of you go and you find an empty box car on the far side of the yard and you start a fire in it. Now don't burn the place down or nothing. Start a good smoky fire with lots of green wood leaves. And you go running toward the station master yelling fire. And when they go off to put out the fire, the rest of us, we go get dinner. And that night, we put the plan into action. The fire that Atomo Fatty started was a beautiful, smoky affair. And you should have seen his great bulk running across the yard yelling, Fire! Fire! The station master headed off, and, and the rest of us, we got our crowbars, and we broke open the locks, and you could hear the angel choir singing. Aww. Chickens everywhere. Some of them one chicken to a crate. Some of them three or four chickens to a crate. We grabbed what we could carry and we got out of there. Back at the yards, we broke up into groups. Uh, one group was just in charge of. We had the pots boiling. One group was in charge of scalding and plucking. One group was in charge of disposal of the evidence. Once we had all the chickens cleaned, why we scrubbed out the pots, we got them full of fresh water. And we got those great big kettles going. Two o'clock in the morning, the water started to boil. And we put the chickens in. Hobos everywhere started pulling out onions and peppers and carrots and celery and all the things that go in a good chicken stew. By six o'clock in the morning, the smell was amazing. Hobos started to melt out of the forest, all producing bowls and spoons from all kinds of places. But nobody got in on that stew unless they contributed something or they brought something for dessert. <laughs> that stew lasted us for a solid week. But the best part, the best part is the next morning when the newspapers come out. It turns out, them chickens, they were not just ordinary everyday run the mill chickens going off to become fried chicken. No, 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 no. They had just come back from winning Blue Ribbon at the California State Fair. They belonged to the University of California in Los Angeles. They was prize-winning research chickens worth upwards of $1,000 a piece. And we ate them all. It was known up and down California as the Million Dollar Mulligan Stew. And hobos all over the place will tell you they was in on it, but I can tell you right now, there weren't much more than about 25 of us that did the job. 